The Lord be with you. A reading of the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones were taking their lamps, when taking their lamps, brought no oil with them. But the wise brought flasks of oil with their lamps. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight there was a cry, Behold, the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish one said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise ones replied, No, for there may not be enough for us and you. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. While they went off to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the door was locked. Afterwards, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore, stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. The ten virgins represent all of us. The bride, who is the bridegroom? Jesus. And what is the wedding feast? Heaven, right? So we're all trying to get to heaven. But some of us are wise and some of us are foolish. The foolish ones do not have enough oil to get into heaven, and the wise do. So what is this oil? Do you want to know what this oil is so that we can accumulate this oil, make sure we have enough of it to enter the wedding feast? What is this oil? Or who is this oil? Grace is this oil. But who would you say this oil is? The Holy Spirit. We can say that the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives grace. So these are the people who are filled with grace. These are the people who are filled with the Holy Spirit. That's the oil, because oil is a symbol for the Holy Spirit. So let's take a look at this and analyze it so see how we can accumulate this oil, how we can be filled with the Holy Spirit so that we may enter into heaven. We don't want the doors to be locked on us. So what is oil used for in the parable? to light the lamps, right? The oil is necessary for the lamps to work. So the oil gives light. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit enlightens us. He gives us wisdom, which we hear in the first reading, right? This is wisdom, enlightenment for us to see, see beyond our natural world, see beyond the human level, but see on a supernatural level. The Holy Spirit reveals to us things of God, things of heaven, supernatural things that he wants us to know, the wisdom of God, so that we may live rightly, so we may follow his guidance. But how do we attain this wisdom? We we hear in the first reading, how do we attain this wisdom? We have to love wisdom. We have to seek wisdom. We have to desire wisdom. That's how we attain it. This is the Holy Spirit himself. We have to seek the Holy Spirit. We have to ask him to come to us and fill us with himself and fill us with his graces and enlighten us. You know, oftentimes when I'm preparing a homily, I'm in front of the the tabernacle. I'm with Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, asking him to enlighten me, to reveal to me what he wants me to say to you to help me to understand the scripture, help me to put a homily together. And so, so should you, should ask for the Holy Spirit. We have to seek her, desire her. It also says keep vigil with her, stay up all night asking for her, wake up early in the morning seeking her, and she will be found for those who desire, those who seek her, and you receive wisdom. And then wisdom gives you enlightenment to understand the things of God, the things of heaven. 
So the foolish ones are the ones who've, never, who've not been enlightened, who've not seek the Holy Spirit, who doesn't live by the ways of God, but live by the ways of the world. The wise ones are the one who live by the ways of God. Their priorities have changed. They're no longer really concerned or tied down with this world, this passing life, but they are concerned about the things of heaven. They're preparing for heaven. You know, today, do you know the feast day? If, if today was not a Sunday, you know whose feast day it would be? St. Elizabeth of the Trinity. St. Elizabeth of the Trinity. When she was younger, she was very talented. She, was, uh, she played the piano, and she, she liked to go to balls and functions and things like that. But then she slowly changed. She was drawn to Jesus, drawn to the Carmelite order. Why? Because the Holy Spirit started to fill her up with himself revealing to her what's really important. Yeah, she was drawn to the world, all of that, the balls, the, the dancing, and the, the men, and, and all that. But at the same time, the Holy Spirit was drawing her to something greater, the things of God, the things of heaven, the Holy Trinity. And so she changed. She entered the convent, the Carmelites, and became a Carmelite nun. So she, be, she started out foolish, but she became wise because she was enlightened by the Holy Spirit. And what else is oil used for? We use oil during cooking. Why do we use oil for cooking? What does it do? It gives off heat. I'm not a cook myself, but I, I, know, I know that much, right? It, it, gives out, it makes it hotter, right? It gives off heat, and so does the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives off heat, and this is the heat of the love of God. The Holy Spirit is also known as the love of God, the love between the Father and the Son. And when he came down at Pentecost, in what form did he come down? As tongues of fire, right? And he inflamed the hearts of the apostles. They were timid and scared and locked themselves in the room before the, the descent of the Holy Spirit. But after he came, they were on fire. They were zealous for the glory of God and the salvation of souls. So that's what the Holy Spirit does when he enters into us, is that he inflames our heart for love of God and the love of neighbor. We, we're no longer selfish or consumed with ourselves. No, we're on fire for the glory of God and the salvation of souls. So that's how the wise virgins, that's those who live in a way that they do acts of charity, they seek the glory of God, they do everything for the good of God and the good of others, not living selfishly for themselves. That's how they accumulate that oil of the Holy Spirit, by practicing acts of love, good works, self-denial. And, the, that's a, and, 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 the, and those are the people who know Jesus. They seek him, right? Just like we sang in the psalm, what my soul thirsts for you, my God, something like that, right? Like a desert that, who, that thirsts for, for the rain. My soul is longing and thirsting for you, my God. How many of us are saying that? How many of us say, my soul is thirsting for you, my God? How, much, how, how many of us are in love with God and we seek him and we can't wait to be with him? Well, that's what Elizabeth of the Trinity did, right? She was filled with the Holy Spirit and she would sought time to be with the Holy Trinity in her deepest being. Then she would go there and spend time with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that was her place of happiness her relationship, her love of the Holy Trinity, right? So the saints are those who love God and love neighbor. The foolish ones are those who do not. They're either indifferent or selfish or apathetic. So that's how another way for us to accumulate this oil by acts of love. And the lastly, when is oil used? Another time that oil is used is for anointing, for anointing. Were we ever anointed? When? At baptism, all of us were anointed by the Holy Spirit, by oil. Besides water being poured over our, our heads, we were also anointed with oil by the priests. 
And that's the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So we were anointed. So what does it mean to be anointed? To be anointed means to be set apart for God, to be chosen and to be set apart for God, to be consecrated to God. So we were stamped with the seal of the Holy Spirit at baptism. We no longer belong to the world. We don't belong to the devil. We don't even belong to ourselves. We belong to God. He has already stamped our souls. So if we're able to see souls, which we cannot, we can tell the difference between a soul that's been baptized and a soul that has not because of the seal of the Holy Spirit. And so we are called to become holy, to become like Jesus, because Jesus, was he anointed? Yes, he was. Remember when he, came, when he was baptized and he came out of the water, what appeared? A dove, right? And what does the dove represent? The Holy Spirit. So he was anointed. The, the word Christ means the anointed one, right? So Jesus Christ is the anointed one. He's anointed by the Holy Spirit. And so we, when we are anointed, we are we are being sanctified. That's another title for the Holy Spirit is the sanctifier. He is making us holy. He is transforming us, conforming us to Jesus himself. And so St. Elizabeth of the Trinity did just that. She cooperated with the Holy Spirit in being sanctified, in growing in holiness, in avoiding sin, avoiding anything that would offend God, that would efface the, his image within her. So she sought to grow in holiness, to conform herself to Jesus. And so those wise virgins are those who live that way. They try to live holy lives. So build up this oil, filled up with the Holy Spirit, and avoid sin. The foolish ones do not. The foolish ones, they live sinfully. They don't try to grow in holiness, and so they don't have enough oil. They're lacking in oil. So now we see what oil means. It, it is really the Holy Spirit filling us up with himself. And he shows us the way to cooperate with him so may, we may be filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with grace, filled with oil when Jesus comes so that we can follow his guidance, his wisdom, and live in a supernatural way so that we may love God and neighbor and that we may strive for holiness so that when God comes, when Jesus comes, we will be ready, be ready to enter into the wedding feast.